Hey, my name is Justin Case, and we are going to talk about the Helium Vote right here, specifically the current one that is up at the top of the list here, which is HIP-105, Modification of Mobile Sub-DAO Hex Limits. But before we do, I'm very excited because I finally convinced my buddy Louie to let me put my uh, Helium Hotspot Indoor in his shop and he finally said okay and i went over there and set it all up and boom there it is i just he would i he wasn't there when i went to put it up his wife was there so uh they weren't really sure if i was allowed to mount it to the wall so i just set it on the side there but as you can see it's a big nail shop uh hopefully it'll get some good rewards we'll see if it gets any data transfer rewards at all it's right next to t-mobile so uh i was really getting some good reception there either way but it it you know put my phone right on to the helium uh mobile network so that was pretty cool and yeah i'm gonna see for the next month whether we get good rewards there or not so very excited about that right now i think at the end of the day that's the big thing right we want to help the network we want to put it in places where we're going to be able to get data transfer but will it work that's always the big issue so i'll let you guys know uh after a week whether i get anything so you'll find out next week so let's talk about HIP 105, the modification of the mobile sub DAO hex limit. And uh, I'm not even going to go through any of this information right here. I just do want to point out that it's only considered for approval if 67% of the voting power is reached. So 67% of the people need to say with their wallets, yes, this is what I want to do. So let's take a look at it. So as it says here at the top, uh, this helium improvement proposal is an amendment of HIP 85 to create separate hex limits for both outdoor Wi-Fi and outdoor CBRS. Each signal, Wi-Fi or CBRS, will have its own limits, meaning that adding a CBRS signal to a REST 12 hex with a pre-established Wi-Fi coverage will not negatively impact rewards. Now, I'm going to assume that goes both ways, right? Uh, adding a Wi-Fi coverage to a CBR pre-established coverage will not negatively affect rewards. It doesn't say that. I'm I'd like to assume that it goes both ways, but we can check the details in a second. Uh, the information within this HIP will supersede HIP 85 upon passing, thus creating one centralized HIP that documents hex limits for both Wi-Fi and CBRS deployments. So the motivation for this is the intention of HIP 85 was to limit modeled coverage points to the top three radio signals from a CBRS radio. However, since HIP 85 only states radio signals and does not specify whether those signals come from CBRS versus Wi-Fi, the HIP was implemented to only count the top three radio signals regardless of source. So this HIP proposes to fix that, allowing up to three CBRS radio signals and three Wi-Fi signals. Now, personally, I mean, I like this. I would rather have them be separate. I think they should be separate. That way, somebody who already has a CBRS setup says, hey, I'm going to add Wi-Fi too, and let's see which people use more. I mean, there's a lot of argument out there. I've heard many of you say that CBRSs are going away. That is totally not true. Uh, they've already stated that they're looking at bringing back CBRS data transfer as the end of Q1 comes. And right now they are trying to get people on a CBRS uh, UX beta program to test the moving back and forth of data for those beta testers. So it's happening, man. We're going to have both CBRS and Wi-Fi. The question is, which one is going to work better? And really, the best way to test it is by allowing people to have both in the same hex without lowering rewards. So honestly, I think this is a good thing. But uh, let's go down here to hex limits right now. 
So, uh, again, please note the passing of this uh, will supersede the five radios proposed in HIP 47 and the two Wi-Fi limit in HIP 101. Well, HIP 101 didn't happen, so that doesn't matter. Uh, So... Okay, indoor. HIP 93 established the limit of one indoor Wi-Fi AP per rest hex uh, will be eligible for POC rewards. This will remain the limit for indoor Wi-Fi. So, you know, you can't have two indoor, but uh, it doesn't. Having an outdoor on the same hex as it's indoor, from my understanding, doesn't make a difference either. These are divided as part of HIP 85. Um, outdoor Wi-Fi. To ensure that only the best outdoor Wi-Fi setups are rewarded, only the top three ranked signals of outdoor Wi-Fi APs to each REST 12 hex will be awarded MCP with decaying multipliers based off of the rank. So again, uh, and this was established previously, only it didn't divide Wi-Fi. So it's saying the top gets a one multiplier, the second gets a 0.75 multiplier, and the third gets a 0.75 to five multiplier. Uh, please note that the multiplier tables only affect the MCP that are given to each outdoor Wi-Fi AP and doesn't affect the distribution of data transfer. So we're not concerned with data transfer. This doesn't lower data transfer rewards. We're only talking about proof of coverage here. And then uh, repeats itself here specifically for CBRS. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to read all of this here. It, it, again, breaks it down into three, and it says the top one has a one multiplier, the second has a 0.75 multiplier, and the third has a 0.25 multiplier, and then anything else will fail. Looking to see if there's anything else important here. Uh, if there is more than one outdoor Wi-Fi AP with the same signal strength, the coverage value will be used uh, based off of the oldest installation. So uh, if if you have, say, the high signal and then the medium signal, it's going to obviously give the most rewards to the highest signal. And if you have two medium signals, it's going to look at which one has been there the longest. Okay. Uh, yeah, dependent. Then they give some examples here. I'm, I'm not going to try to read this whole thing. Uh, I just want you to know what's happening. And, uh, again, I, at this point, we're not seeing a lot of overlap, but here's the thing. So I am right now, uh, in this here in Denver and I've put, uh, two overlapping signals. That's me overlapping signals and here in the overlapping signals i have my wi-fi and i have my cbrs my cbrs goes farther with high coverage than my wi-fi does which ends up giving a medium so the wi-fi is going to get that 0.75 but the argument here is that these shouldn't be competing um cbrs's don't even transfer anything right now wi-fi does so for right now you should be giving the wi-fi uh 100 percent uh and it's it's not right now it's going to give it for this particular hex 0.75 rewards uh and i think as i've said earlier in this conversation um we should be dividing them. It makes sense because we want to see which one works out the best. Uh, Right here uh, where these are covering is a park, which a lot of the people in my neighborhood go to. And I say, yes, we should find out uh, which uh, is going to be used more. We're not going to find that out again till the end of Q1. But once that happens, I, I would love to report data transfer on Salty Satin Baboon versus Fluffy Latte Mockingbird. So in my opinion, I say yes, let's move forward with HIP 105. I would vote yes on HIP 105. I think most of us want these divided too with HIP 105. So uh, yeah, I hope this happens. Don't really have much more to say about it. So, hey, uh, I am going to post other videos on HIP 103, which is about mobile 
Oracle Hex Boosting, and HIP98, which is on mobile sub -dial quality of service requirements. So please do watch those videos. Like and subscribe any videos that you do like. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Obviously, I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great evening.